Uh, warm greetings from the Chronicle. I am Keba Jefang. Uh, we are here at the Ministry of Finance uh, to actually have an exclusive interview with the Permanent Secretary of uh, Ministry of Finance. Of course, the interviews would be centered around the you know, controversial COVID-19 funding that is making a lot of noise around town. So with me here, I have the, um, I have the Permanent Secretary, Mr. Buasedi. Welcome to the Chronicle, Mr. Peace. Thank you. Uh, welcome. So we start with the controversial, you know, funding. That is the five hundred million dollars that co was contributed by the Gambia government itself. Can you take us through how did this money came about? Okay, I don't think uh, the five hundred. There is no controversy in these uh, five hundred million. These are purely resources of the Gambia government. The Gambian people. This is uh, these monies are. Uh, uh, is the tax uh, paid by the Gambian people, the revenue that is raised on behalf of uh, Gambians in other words. Um, it's from the budget. These are purely Gambia government local funds, uh, meaning these are resources from directly from the budget. What we did is before I come to talk about the 500 million, there is a 12 million dollars that was allocated released to the Ministry of Health to spend on COVID uh, expenses. That was, that was before the 500 million was uh, yes, put yes, together. Yes. And these uh, monies from the budget, Gambia government funds, um, when this uh, COVID pandemic, um, the virus started um, uh, getting to us here, um, the Ministry of uh, Health, even before the first case was announced, I believe, uh, the Ministry of Health requested for um, some resources, and uh, we gave them four million dollars for a start. A week after, they came back for more resources, and we gave them eight million dollars, totaling twelve million, and that was what was released in the first stages of this. Uh, a virus reaching our source. Thereafter, um, the Minister of Finance and uh, the Minister of Health got together and uh, we told them how much money would they need to fight this uh, pandemic. <clears throat> and the reason is that when we went to the National Assembly to answer to their call, to uh, explain to the Assembly our assessment of the impact of the COVID pandemic on the Gambian economy. After the Honorable Minister of Finance um, reporting to the Assembly on the impact of the COVID pandemic on the Gambian uh, uh, economy, um, during the question and answer uh, session, uh, they asked the Finance Minister how much money is the Finance Ministry uh, or will the finance ministry be uh, able to make available for the fight against COVID-19? And the minister said, any amount that is necessary. So when we came, we went to work. And like I said, after the 12 million was released, we asked uh, the Minister of Health their requirement to throw, in terms of uh, resources, to throw at this problem so that uh, Gambians can be safe, how to prevent and control it, as well as those who are unfortunate to um, have this virus, how are they going to be cured? So um, their director of health came to, over to the Minister of Finance. We sat with him and they explained what the things that they need to be able to be well equipped in terms of the um, health system to deal with this pandemic. And uh, after listening to him, we also invited independent um, private doctors. And uh, these are doctors that are Gambian citizens, retired, who had worked in the international arena. But they are back uh, in the Gambia as retirees. And some doctors who are private operators. Um, so we also interacted with them to know 
the level of preparedness of uh, our health system uh, to respond to the COVID pandemic. After listening to them also, then we had, we the, were equipped with the necessary information in order to determine how much money that we can try to source from the budget to allocate to the Ministry of Health to take care of this COVID pandemic. And that's how we were able to calculate and come up with the $500 million. And the $500 million, the way we put the money together is to reallocate the resources within the budget, the approved 2020 budgets. Yes, the $500 million. We cut all sectors, their budgets, especially traveling, travel budgets, because I mean, airspaces have been closed and His Excellency the President announced that there are travel, total travel restrictions for all public servants. So nobody is traveling. So we made a big savings from that. And then other sectors within the budget, um, expenditures that are not considered essential, non-essential expenditures were also cut significantly to put together this 500 million. So the 500 million is all Gambia government resources from the approved 2020. Mm. And then so far, um, la as, as uh, far as the last press conference minister attended, mm -hmm. he did made, uh, made it clear that uh, 160 million have been spent out of this 500 million. Yes. Um, how was this spent? Okay, the 160 million that you are referring to was uh, the total expenses from the 500 million dollars is COVID, 512 million dollars is COVID fund, yes. COVID-19 fund. Uh, that is as of um, April 24th, Friday, April 24th. It was uh, uh, 160 million dollars. Um, that 160 million dollars was spent on training, travels, um, hotel accommodation for quarantine um, people, paying for their bills, hotel bills, food for quarantine people, medical equipment and supply, um, sanitary supplies, and also impresses were given to all the regional health uh, directors in all the regions in the Gambia, um, $100,000 is each was given to uh, equip themselves with resources, financial resources, every region. Every region. That health yes, they were all given impress, um, $100,000 to spend on this thing. In addition to all these uh, items, expenditure categories that I mentioned, um, eight pickup vehicles were also purchased to facilitate the movement of frontline health workers. These are contact tracing people. There are other people who were not quarantined at uh, hotels or facilities created for that purpose, but they are also within the community that uh, health workers were monitoring. So in order to facilitate that movement, they need vehicles to move. This is an emergency. That's why we bought those um, vehicles also to facilitate uh, the movement of health workers. So that's how this 160 million was spent. The expenditure categories that I mentioned uh, came out of the 60 million dollars. 60 million. The 100 million um, in dollar terms is two million dollars. And that two million dollars the Minister of Health came to the procurement committee and requested that uh, since we have this opportunity of the World Bank procurement team um, procuring medical equipment in Turkey, um, ventilators, ambulances, medical supplies, essential medical uh, equipment and supplies in Turkey, um, and they were to be shipped to the Gambia. And that did not exhaust the needs of the medical minister of health. So they thought it's prudent and wise to now, in addition to what is 
procured by the te World Bank $10 million, the Gambia government's own $2 million resources. They came to the procurement committee so that we allow the World Bank to purchase that equivalent of those um, equipments and supplies from Turkey so that they can all be airlifted and uh, sent to Gambia. So we release that $2 million, which is $100 million, to take care of that. So you understand. So that is the 100 million to procure equipments from and medical supplies from Turkey. This would include Those were, the 100 million is not spent locally in the Gambia. Yeah. That is money spent outside for procurement Turkey. of those materials. Yes. Yeah. So uh, would these materials also include um, the PPEs? Because I'm wondering because um, I know for the fact that the the Chinese uh, guy actually made a donation which involved this thing, no, uh, no, the PPE. No. This is no donation. So okay. This is totally independent of that. These are uh, expenses from our own resources. That is, these are not donations. These are monies that are taken from the budget to buy medical supplies, equipment, and the like from Turkey. I think what is confusing you is that the procurement, the $10 million, I mentioned World Bank procurement team. So let me just explain that. World Bank gave the Gambia government $10 million to spend on this COVID uh, pandemic. Uh, yeah. That $10 million never reached the source of the Gambia. Okay. It is monies that the World Bank gave to the Gambia as assistance. It's not loan. These are grants, free money. It's not in your hand. It's not in, was in our hands. It has never been placed in any account in the Gambia or physically brought to Gambia. What happened is when we agreed on um, the use of that $10 million, which is uh, entirely to purchase medical equipment and supplies, ventilators, ambulances, and the like for Gambia. That is to equip our medical, uh, our health uh, system, our health facilities. So we agreed with the World Bank that that 10 million, that they should buy these items and equipment uh, from abroad. Because this was a time, that is when this thing just broke, uh, reached the source of the Gambia. And uh, at that time, um, borders were being closed, air spaces were shutting down, supply chains were gradually uh, being reduced and interrupted. So we had to move fast to buy these things. Otherwise, um, if things are shut down, they will not be available to us. And these are critical to fight against the COVID pandemic. So they, uh, we agreed with the World Bank team that they should use their procurement um, agencies to buy these medical equipment and uh, supplies for us. And fortunately, they got these items. Um, they were available in Turkey, and they bought them for us, the 10 million. That is, they spent the 10 million in Turkey buying these um, um, needs, equipments and supplies. So like I said, that's 10 million from World Bank. Now the 2 million that health needed to take advantage of the availability of these supplies and equipment in Turkey, and then the World Bank had already established contact there and they bought these things. So they said, let's uh, ap get approval from the procurement committee so that World Bank can buy extra $2 million worth of equipment and supplies for Gambia so that when these things are being shipped, they come together. So that $2 million, which translates to $100 million, was also released from the COVID funds of this $500 million, $512 million. So the $2 million is uh, two million dollars equivalent to hundred million dollars that was spent in Turkey 
plus the 60 million that was spent locally in the Gambia as of 24th of April combined. That's what the minister announced at the press conference last week, Friday, that as of that date, 160 million dollars uh, was spent out of the 512 million dollars is covid for that's clear I hope so, that's clear. yeah that's clear so that will take us to the second um, much debated uh, issue yes. of course that is the purchasing of the rice and then the food uh, food food support that the yes. president actually launched yes, uh, yes. last sunday uh -huh. um how was this money also acquired okay this money also is like the same these are uh, it's our, also through them no the the for this um, food support the government of the gambia when this pandemic um unraveled uh, we knew it's not going to affect the health sector that is lives our lives it also affects our livelihood and that is the economy so we knew that these things will come so we started working on this, putting this food package together um, so that we know that there is support for the vulnerable and poor. Because <clears throat> if we have to fight against this pandemic, control it, control and contain it. That means we have to observe the social distancing rules. Um, in order to uh, do that effectively, um, the government also said to the public sector and private that non-essential staff, workers, should stay home to decongest the places, workplaces. They went further to announce a state of emergency. And then the president also requested from the National Assembly for a 90 days state of emergency, was, which was reduced to 45 days and approved by the National Assembly. Now, if you are telling people that you have to reduce your activities, economic activity is being reduced, um, they stay home. That means you are reducing their earning capacity, their incomes. And we know that we are all not equally blessed, evenly. Some have, some have not. Some have a lot, some have a moderate little. So now, if you are telling people stay home, they have not, some of them get up, go to the market, sell. By afternoon time, by midday, they buy the food stuff they need to eat with their families, go home and cook and eat. Others go, laborers go and do their daily works, um, get income, use that to feed themselves and their families. Now, if we are cutting that off, some of them it's totally cut off, some at a very reduced scale. But let's remember these are periods also we are telling people markets. Uh, operations will be also reduced. They open, I think, in the morning up to two or thereabout. So that means less income for people. If you want people to now stay at home and observe the social distancing rules, that means you have to provide those vulnerable and poor people. So as a result of these, uh, all these things, uh, we need to provide some kind of support. And the reason why it took a little bit longer than the government intends to provide is that you have to plan for these things. You rightly said, you have to source, look for money. You have to also plan and know, quantify how many people are we providing this food support for in terms of the number of households. Okay, how many households do we have in the country? How many people are in each of these households? So that data you have to get. And fortunately, the GBOS, Gambia Bureau of Statistics, they had the data, 280,659 households, according to the GBOS data. That's 84%. No, that is total households in yes. the country. 
280,659 in the entire country, number of households. We started from that. And then we started coming, drilling down. Because the 280,659 households, not everybody needs that food support. So that's why we had to now reduce that 280,659 household, which we call universal. That's everybody. We now reduce it. And we consider different ways of doing it. First, we said, where people, affluent people live, that is the Fajaras, Cape Point, uh, Pipeline, Brusubi, and the like. We said, those people don't need it because they are kind of middle income to high income level people. But we know that um, <clears throat> that is not completely true. Within these communities, you have pockets of people who are not well off. Even people who are living there, um, they were not considered vulnerable, but now their income le levels have declined. They are now uh, in the vulnerable class. So you cannot now eliminate those people totally like that. Then we said another source of statistics could be, let's look at uh, people's contributions um, at the social security, both pension fund, pension contributions and provident fund contributions. Um, and then we had a sort of a threshold that anybody who earns this amount of income on monthly basis from that level and above, we exclude them. But then that also, a complete data is not available. So we said um, we abandoned that. Then we started going into some statistical samplings being done across the country. And we also involve the regional governor's office to talk to the um, local authorities, the CFO and the Alcalos and even the VDCs, their own method of collecting data so that we have a good feel of uh, the number of households that we are uh, targeting and where they are. <clears throat> so that's how we now came down from the universal level to uh, determining that 84% of the universal total household, is those are the people who need this. And again, we have to further refine, refine that statistics to now determine so that in terms of distribution of this food stock, we are able to now uh, do it fairly and evenly and distribute it well so that no household is treated unfairly. What I mean by that is that each household, we have to now know how many people are living in that household. Because if my household is three people or four or five and your household is 10 and above, it's not fair for me to get a bag of rice and you also a bag of rice. At least your quantity of rice and sugar should be more than that for mine because of the number of people that are living with you. So we had to figure out that also and again determine each member of that household, what quantity of rice does he need a day to survive? This all, we have a committee that comprises of different, different agencies and sectors of the government. Even World Food Program, they are on it. Um, these are um, agencies that have the experience, they've been doing this over time. So we got their input to determine now in terms of sharing, if a household contains one, two, three, how many uh, kilograms of rice and sugar you uh, distribute to that family. That's how that this, is, this whole thing was done. Exactly. So now I have to take you back to the, the number there. That is the figure. The amount of money, I think it's 700 million. It's 734 million yeah, so dollars. The initial 512 was actually acquired you know, from the cut of the budget. How was this one acquired? This money also, you see, we are now looking at the budget and also donor resources, you know. So, but the donor resources, <clears throat> we are getting contributions locally 
uh, an account was open at the central bank for COVID contributions. Also, from donors abroad, for instance, it's an open secret, the RCF from the IMF, um, which was given to central bank, and central bank now on land to uh, the central government in Dallas, uh, which translates to $1.1 billion, roughly. It's $21.3 million. Those do you have a loan that is given to the government? No, there is no loan given to the government. It's not a loan to government. It's an RCF, rapid credit uh, facility, to the central bank, not the central government. IMF, they don't give any loan to any government. They deal with the central bank. If they want to help the government in terms of issues like this, to support government or, budget, or support government's budget, they give it to the central bank. But it will be, it will be repaid? It will be repaid. By, they, by the government? By the central bank. By the central bank, not government. Central bank now gets that loan from the IMF. Central bank, now the Dallas, because it's in dollars, when it reaches the account of the central bank in the Gambia here, is in Dallas. Those Dallas, the central bank lends to the Gambia government. That is $1.1 billion. And the memorandum of understanding has been drawn and signed by the governor and the finance minister. It's there. What is now left yeah. is for the Minister of Finance to go to the National Assembly for supplementary appropriation. Yeah, so be, before, before we... Yeah. The one, you asked for how that is going to be financed. That 1.1 billion with all other resources are there. But this 1.1 billion, before we can spend it, is monies that are outside the budget. Before we can spend it, we have to go to the National Assembly for them to approve those resources now to be put as part of the budget. Okay, That's what then, supplementary appropriation maybe, means. Maybe I will need cl clarification on this point before you move on. I thought, um, it's my individual thought that, you know, before any money will, will arrive in the Gambia through the government or through the central bank, it should be first taken to parliament. No. Central bank is a separate um, part of the government. Central bank, they have their own budget. By their act, they can contract loans on their own and they pay loans on their own. Their loans don't come to the government. It's not part of our um, um, loan portfolio and we, they don't, we don't pay for it. If they default, it's between them and their creditors. They, we are entitled to for, So that's why theirs is, doesn't even come um, around that area. You know, so these are entirely arrangements between the IMF and the central bank. Our spending ability is constrained by the fact that these are monies that are not in the approved budget. For it to be part of the approved budget, for us to have the legal mandate to spend these resources, we have to go to the National Assembly for supplementary appropriation, meaning we have to go to them to approve and say, okay, this new money that you have, the $1.1 billion, you have our blessing. They approve and uh, we come back, then we can spend. That's what we are pl preparing to go to the assembly. So would it be within that amount where this food, food support uh, project would be? That amount right? will enhance our resources, that amount plus all other donor funding that is coming plus our own local fund, it's a consolidated revenue fund. So that enhances our ability to buy this food uh, support. It's all, yeah, it's all, more, it's all uh, Gambia government money to be spent on the economy, on anything that has to do with, let's remember, these resources that we are chasing up after, that you guys are chasing after to know how, where and how it is spent, are all not only there for the COVID expenses. Uh, um, what I mean is not there for only lives, also livelihoods. 
that means it's not there for only spending on the health sector yeah. hospitals and the health system but the economy also that this goes beyond even the food support you have only also vulnerabilities in different areas yes we have to eat but then businesses must go on people who are hot, hot uh, and businesses that are hurt by this covid must also survive in different ways it's not only through food intake there are other ways for instance and that is why indirectly is also a pool of resources we are throwing at this pandemic that is gra has also um, been generous and also trying to help in the fight against covid by declaring that people who cannot pay their taxes because of the reduction in their cash flows can um, defer tax payment filing and payment of taxes without any penalty or interest for two months you can do that in addition if you are having constraints because of um, reduction in cash flows again income you can go to GRA sit with them and draw a payment plan which will give you the ability at your own comfort to say this is what I can afford and then they work with you for over a period of time that's what you will be paying at your own comfort and then the other thing is that the revenues that they are supposed to calculate from import of essential commodities those ones are, ca are calculated based on the CIF value the CIF dollar value which is converted to dollars to calculate the revenue what CIF means cost freight and insurance value of import they've reduced that by 20 percent to calculate the final figure and then you pay revenue in that these are all revenue losses to the government transferred to the Gambian people operators in the private sector all is government money to fight the negative impact of COVID-19 on the economy. Yeah, so a related question to that actually would be like the procurement, the money it was done because yes. it also generated a lot of eyebrows. Okay. Many people were not satisfied the way you know the procurement was done as regards to the you know food food uh, support that the government actually did. Yes. How was this done? Because people are saying this was even announced the bidding was even declared on friday mm -hmm. and then you know by sunday or even saturday you know food food stuff we are seeing at the makari square how was this done okay um this everything that we are doing here at the ministry of finance <clears throat> and as a government to fight against this covid pandemic is being done very transparently i can say that with confidence because as permanent secretary i'm the accounting officer of this ministry and i know <clears throat> what is happening um, the procurement of these food items and procurement for the health sector i will explain both because these are all issues that need to be clarified to the gambian people and thoroughly explained simplified so that everybody understands and we are all on the same platform um, you know we are in terms of emergency there is no time to waste when we finally calculated like I told you the quantum of money that is needed to buy this food stuff and the quantity of food stuff we had to get approval from the executive when his excellency the president approved for this food support to be extended to the Gambian people, then we knew that we have to do it and do it transparently. Because at the end of the day, after COVID, when the dust settles, there will be accountability. We have to come back again, explain to the Gambian people. We have to go to their representatives. They will call us. We'll have to explain to them. So with that in mind, and also as public servants, whatever we do, we swore that we will do our job without fear or favor and what that means everything you do you'll be accounted by allah i mean we'll not stay here and the first day in the grave 
I mean, my brother, those are not uh, uh, things to joke with. But coming back to your point, so where after the approval of His Excellency the President, we knew we had to do this procurement. So we said, okay, um, how are we going to do it? We had the experience of um, the COVID and funds related to health. We said, let's replicate same thing here. And that is we formed a procurement committee. And that procurement committee <clears throat> is chaired by the permanent secretary, Ministry of Trade, because they deal with the private sector. Um, it comprises of our chair, permanent secretary of trade, my humble self, permanent secretary of finance, the director general of Gambia Public Procurement Agency, permanent secretary of agriculture, um, Director General, uh, Department of Strategic Policy, uh, Department at the Office of the President, and the Director of National Disaster Management Agency. We sat down as a group and said, how do we do this thing in an orderly fashion and transparently, and, uh, and we have to move fast. That's why we brought decision makers at the table where the bureaucratic red tape is cut through. We have to do this first. People are hurting. Gambians have been crying for a long time for support from their government. You as a journalist, you were all over the radio, newspapers. When is the Gambia government providing food support if you are telling to people to stay at home? So, <clears throat> but government activities takes processes. So when we formed this procurement committee, then we said that we need to we said we need to um, buy this food stock for $734 million is, is involved. Um, we have two options. To go direct to the distributors, buy, and concentrate all that wealth in few hands, or we also use the money to kind of alleviate the pressure on small and medium-sized businesses by patronizing them to also give them those contracts to go and um, buy rice and prov um, um, supply to the government. So we decided, okay, 30% of this $734 million is, will be given to um, the distributors, big businesses. 70% will be given to small and medium-sized enterprises, SMEs. After deciding on that, how do we now, distributors, big businesses, we know them. We can go directly to them. But how do we now go to the 70%? If I go to you and you are a supplier, I consider you a supplier, I give you a contract, I know you. I go to my brother, my friend here, my aunt here, there will be an outcry. They will say, how can you do this? You are fair, unethical. So we said, let us advertise. But the advertisement also cannot take too long because you have to deliver food to people. These are not normal times. It's an emergency. You are telling people, sit in your houses, close your shops. And this has been for a long period. So we have to act fast. But despite that, we are conscious of our responsibility as public servants. So we advertised. This was on a Wednesday, last week, Wednesday. We took the decision in the afternoon, and we said, let's advertise. And we targeted that Wednesday, 10 o'clock, GRTS evening news, 10 o'clock news. So I sat in my office here after the procurement committee meeting and decision that 70% would be advertised to give it to SMEs. I sat here. The PS trade did not close. He sat in his office the Director General of Gambia Public Procurement Agency. You have that guy in the team. You cannot go wrong with procurement issues. So now, he sat in his office. The PS Trade, our chair, wrote the advertisement announcement and then sent it to us via email. We all looked at it and then provide comments, finalize it, and then um, the, GR, uh, the Director General of Gambia Public Procurement Agency now takes this to the television for announcement. 
at that level. This was done on? On Wednesday, last week. And then Thursday, we allow it to run. And we said in the advertisement, so it allowed Friday, okay. Friday, 2 o'clock, it will be closed. We cannot go beyond that because we have to move fast and provide these food items. So the one, when we took that decision, that very Wednesday, we also knew that His Excellency the President would announce that this food um, support to the Gambian people by him and his government, he wants to announce it on Friday at the Makati Square with some food items there in the background. That was, so to do that on Wednesday, if you want to wait for the announcement for people to bid to supply these food items, which was going to close Friday, two o'clock, then that thing will not happen. So we said, let's give out that supply of 10,000 bags of rice, 10,000 bags of sugar, 5,000 um, 10 liter oils, uh, drums of oil, to somebody to supply. And the way we drill down on that supplier is this. Couple of days before that, the Director General of GPPA, Gambia Public Procurement Authority uh, or Agency, was approached by some women group leaders who were part of the GCCI. And he even sent me a text to that effect. I have it, a text or email, I have it in my mobile. Uh, they approached him and said that women suppliers, vendors, government vendors are not given the right uh, treatment. They are not uh, awarded equally compared to their male counterparts. The same information reached the director of uh, the National Disaster Management Agency, he told us. So we said, since these women uh, groups are there, um, the director general, the director of the National Disaster Management Agency, we told him, who is part of our committee, since you know these women groups, now give it to one of the women groups for them to supply that. But that group and their leader cannot participate in the uh, tender process. So that's how he went, he knows the people he talked to, and then that group was uh, selected. He spoke to the leader of one of the women groups, and then that contract was given to that group. But with the condition that they cannot participate in this uh, tender process, the bid that was announced and to be closed on Friday, 2 o'clock. Friday, 2 o'clock, we closed the bid. Um, the box that contained the envelopes was carried to the conference room of the Ministry of Trade. We were all there, committee members, and the people who wanted to supply, all vendors were there. We opened the box, put everything on the table, conference table, and then they were all there sitting and standing. And then the Minister of Trade staff, support staff to the committee, procurement committee of the food items, came and then there was a gentleman who was opening each envelope announcing what the vendor or that business, that SME, is uh, 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 requesting to supply in terms of how many bags of rice. The rice where advertisement was in lots of 10,000 bags. So if you want a lot, it's 10, you, you write to say, I will supply 10,000 bags of rice, 10,000 bags of sugar, and X um, thousand number of 10 liter uh, oil drums. So, and then you indicate price for each of these items. And then once that is announced, it's recorded and placed. That's how we did it until every envelope was opened and they were all satisfied. And every uh, vendor who was there, their names were collected and they left. Their envelopes are there. We sat down, <clears throat> that took time, took us up to after three to four. So we said, it's Ramadan time. If we want to sit here to do this thing correctly, we will break our fast here. And we are all 
family um, um, heads. So we decided to break and come back on Saturday. Saturday we met here. Our conference room is small. It cannot accommodate everybody if we want to observe social distancing. We went to the conference room of the Ministry of Agriculture. We sat there and then the support staff from the Ministry of Trade had all the information and they entered, inputted it in the, their computers and came with it uh, on that Saturday. The Director General of GPPA sat there, he is the most experienced in the, in the committee. He sat there, went through it, examined it, structured it for us, and then we had a projector and we looked at everything. And then we had, then we went to select by certain criteria. And then after that selection process, again, we had to do some elimination process again. And then finally, we still have more than what we needed. So now we went through prices. If you bid over and above um, the ceiling, price, price ceiling, you are rejected. And that's how we narrow it down to the 230,000 bags that we needed for rice and sugar and the oil also, the quantity we needed. And those people were now called and uh, awarded with the contracts to supply this. And we told them, if you cannot supply, you have to tell us in time, right, and tell us I cannot supply, then so that we don't have shortages. Oh, that's a long list. It's, uh, what, is it 30 something or 40 something? I don't have the list, but it's a lot. A lot of people, yes. I know it's, is it not close to 40 or more? They all won, they all won the... Some were rejected. I mean, yeah, so those I mean, that I were mean, given yeah. the contract to yeah. supply. Yes. I cannot tell you the exact figure, but it's quite a lot. And that's why you see, when you are coming to Makati Square, you are seeing all these activities. Because now we are telling them, supply and deliver at Makati Square. And then our guys now, pick and distribute it countrywide. Because we also, we form committees. This will be done uh, properly in an orderly fashion. I will ask you one final question, and that is about the EU funding. Um, yes. They also gave something to the government. It's nine, it's nine million euros, <clears throat> translating to Dallas roughly Dallas. around 512 exactly. million, 512 million dollars. But that is different. Yes. So from the 512 yes. from, from the government side, I understand form. that. Yes. yes. So I just wonder because the, that you know aid, that assistance from EU is meant to support the budget. Yes. Budget support. Yes. Uh, how do you intend? Where in the budget are you supporting? You see that budget support money is built in the, the budget even before COVID. That is already programmed there. What is happening is what you are getting, these are in trenches at different periods within the year. What is happening is they are fast tracking it and give it to you in bulk. So it's already funds that we are anticipating to spend in the budget. We already know, it's already programmed where we are going to spend those things. So it's now we reprioritize, rearrange our budget, just like we have done to get these resources, to in order to provide this support to Gambian people, both on the side of livelihoods and lives. It's the same thing. It's the same um, creativity that we have to, uh, again, do to see how do we now spend on the Gambian people. Remember, this COVID, the characteristics of this disease is not still known to uh, even doctors. The way it is unraveling, nobody understands it. How long is it going to take, nobody understands it. Still now, borders are closed, air spaces are locked down, there are flights, uh, uh, planes are not flying. The ones that are now flying are special arrangements of countries trying to um, evacuate their citizens from another country. Supply chains, are, some are, have been locked down. Some of the source countries have even said to take care of their internal needs that we are not selling any of our products outside. So when you are forced with a situation like that, it's very important 
on how you manage your resources. And that is why we are paid all this money to sit here and work. So that's now our creativity to now see how do we mitigate the impact of COVID-19 on our uh, uh, people. Remember, there is going to be life after COVID. And COVID has disrupted our way of life, our health system, our health is a threat to our lives and it has disrupt, disrupted our economic activities. We have to now respond to that. We've responded to it and that's why we are kind of, we have a good handle of the situation now. But we have to now stabilize, restore the system that we are doing now. After now stabilizing, restoring and now working on knowing gradually, day by day, how long this is going to take, how firmly are we in control. At the end of the day, when everything now settles down, we have to restart our economy, our way of life, you know. So all those things involve planning. So these monies are there, but they need quite careful thinking and in what areas to spend to relieve the pressure on people. That's what we are doing here. So sitting and telling you, oh, this 500 million, I'm going to spend on buying this car, giving to X, or, or fixing that house. No, that's not how it's done. You have to plan carefully for this. We have to strengthen our health systems. We have to support our families, our businesses. And we government must function. We have to pay salaries, services, basic essential services that government is set up to provide to its people have to continue. So these are the areas that we are looking at to spend these monies. Public is out there, they are yes. concerned about the funding. Every day they are seeing, seeing money pumping into government. You know, that is actually what is actually brewing. A lot of concerns, you know, uh, with regards to how these monies are managed by our very own government yes. with the fear that, you know, it could be corrupt you know, there could be a lot of, you know, dubious activities. Final, final message no, to them, how do you assure them that no, these monies will be well thing. kept? You see, we are all honorable people, people of integrity, public servants, okay? Um, and uh, we took up this job voluntarily to serve our country. So for us, it's about legacy, it's not about money. Um, these resources that are put together, I want to make it clear to everybody, Gambians both at home and in the diaspora, <clears throat> all the resources we are spending so far, except the 10 million that is spent outside the country to procure these medical equipment and facilities, all the resources we are spending are Gambia government funds. So these resources that are coming, at the outbreak of this thing, we are still talking to donor partners. Some are promising soft loans, some are promising grants. We want to be cautious on loans in view of our debt level. So the grants, we're still talking to African Development, Development Bank, they are pledging to help, Islamic Development Bank, Badia. So these are all resources that are going to come. And when they come, they are put in accounts. Those accounts are at the central bank. They are managed and controlled by the accountant general. And to draw any money from those accounts, requests have to be made to the Ministry of Finance, to the Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Finance. Then I approve those requests, send it to the relevant um, um, area in the ministry, which is the directorate of budget, to say, take necessary actions. And if it is to be charged to a ministry's account, budget line, to do that expenditure on behalf of the government, it is put on that ministry's budget uh, line in the IFMI system, that's the accounting platform. Uh, but then that is done. First, the budget directorate. Now the director of budget and his staff looks what is the balance there, the resources there 
in each of these uh, accounts. Then they decide it is going to go to this sector. Then that budget line item is augmented. And then the accountant general is there seeing it. He gets the instruction to say, uh, move this bond, uh, uh, monies. It's allocated to this ministry, this budget line. He moves it there. And then that ministry is notified. Their accountant have access to the IFMIS. He's seeing it and they spend. And we at the Ministry of Finance, we are very much involved in these expenditures. We don't now, uh, we don't give monies to government ministries, departments and agencies and say spend and we relax. Because at the end of the day, we are the people accountable to the Gambian population. Those people that are doing the spending, they are accountable. But the final accountability is us. It is us that you are asking now. It is this ministry that the National Assembly will call to ask, how did you spend these resources? How did you spend this money? So that's why it's very important to us to monitor the expenditures of these monies. And that's why we are setting these committees, these uh, food um, um, support that has been provided to the Gambian people. Whatever we are spending on it is approved by a committee. All requests are approved by a committee. Like we at health, we have a committee co-chaired by the Permanent Secretary Health and the Permanent Secretary Finance. And the members again are the Director General of GPPA. He is central in this thing, all procurement so that, like I said, we cut all the bureaucratic late tape. This is an emergency period urgent. He sits and guides us and he approves the procurement process. The accountant general sits on this committee. The di internal audit director general sits on the committee. The director of health sits on the committee. The deputy permanent secretary, um, uh, minister of health sits on this committee. Me as permanent secretary and co-chair with my technical team, they, they are there to give me that uh, technical backup. The health permanent secretary has his team to back him up, and then we sit down on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. All requests concerning health-related health related expenditures out of these $512 million comes to the Minister of Health, the Permanent Secretary, Minister of Health. Then he brings those requests for expenditure to the, we call it procurement committee. This procurement committee was set up by the Honorable Minister of Health, Dr. Samate, and the Honorable Minister of uh, Finance, uh, Mr. Mamburenjai. And then we look at these requests. There are, we either approve or not approve. There are instances when we reject requests for expenditure. We say it's not genuine. It's not supposed to come out of these uh, uh, resources is not a priority. There are um, those that are genuine and are needed, we approve and fast track it. That's how these, uh, we are conducting this business. Just to be transparent and accountable to the Gambian people. So your monies are very safe. Thank you very much. Uh, we ended there. Thank you very much, our viewers. Uh, this You're is all the time we get for. This is the Chronicle. I'm Keba Jeffa. Until we come on your way again, bye-bye.